A lot of great music came from the 80s. Queen, The Cure, Guns N' Roses. But one band stood out from all the others. Drunk. Homophobic. Shout that camera. Fuck off, you southern puffs, right? And wildly sexist. Close your legs, what your meat smells. The band took over as one of the most controversial British punk rock bands of their time. They made the Sex Pistols look like angels. Love them or hate them, they were the Mac lads. Fuck off, John. <laughs> right, OK, you've got a choice. You can either sing beer, beer, we want more beer. Or you can suck my fucking knob. If you want to listen to beer, beer, shout cunt. You are queer, aren't you? Fucking gay. The cunts have it. They were known for their reckless antics and relentless irony, but did the fans take their music literally? Were the band happy? What is the truth behind their most famous lyrics? No. We're going to delve into the minds of the three original members that created this disturbed genius band. The Guardian recently wrote an article about the band, claiming that their timing could have been hopelessly wrong. Had they carried on into the following decade into a generation of music that appreciated irony, the band may have been more successful, if not chart-topping. Let's take a look back to the 80s and inside the minds of the Mac lads. So, were they happy with where they peaked? Oh, uh, well, I suppose I left at the wrong time, it was a mistake, and uh, would have liked to travel a bit more, that's all. We didn't quite make it to America. We got banned on the way in. We got as far as Shannon Airport. Um, that would have been nice, but other than that. Why did you get banned from America? Um, <laughs> I guess our reputation preceded us. So. No, no. I was absolutely over the moon. I mean, we played all over the world, well, all over Germany anyway, and Belgium and places. We played to people that didn't even speak English, so you couldn't have thought that writing about Mac would have actually appealed to Russian speakers or people who slept on the streets in Leipzig. So it went a lot further than we thought. Here we chat to Chris Bamford, a long-time fan and friend of the band. Ah, get it down here then. The, uh, the Mac lads lobotomised music. They were basically saying what people were thinking if they had a, a very low IQ. After turning down a number of other documentaries, the three original members agreed to tell us the true stories behind some of their most known and notorious lyrics. <laughs> it's a bit like that one. It was actually in a cinema. A girl says to his boyfriend, do you love me? And he turns around and says, I fuck you, don't I? Now that's true. But their most famous song was about Charlotte. Supposedly, she was the biggest slag in Mac. The one thing that nobody knows for certain is who is Charlotte. But did she really exist? There was a lot of observation that we'd heard in pubs, chippies, uh, you know, things like uh, when we sing about certain women, people think they existed. But for instance, Charlotte. This bloke I know, and he fell in love with a bird that was gorgeous, but she was fucking dirty. She was Charlotte, the biggest slap in the Just behind my head, there used to be a tunnel that went under the railway station. Okay. Now I know I'm looking into the camera now because this is this is gravitas. There's a tunnel went under the railway station and the three of us had a photo taken down there and when we, the photo was developed it said Charlotte is the biggest slag in Mac in the graffiti behind our heads. And so we investigated and we wrote the story word for word true. Charlotte is the biggest slag in Mac. Charlotte was simply just graffiti, a fictional character captured in the background of a photo shoot. The Mac lads were like Marmite, splitting a generation. Geniuses in the face of political correctness, or chauvinistic pigs, 
Either way, they were a force to be reckoned with, and a band that we won't be forgetting anytime soon. Mayday. 